Figma Sites or Framer? Is this the end of Framer and every other Noco tools out there? Or is it even worth switching from one to the other? What does the future actually look like for these amazing tools? In this video, we're going to break it all down a full review of Figma Sites versus Framer to see who wins the Noco battle or if there is even a battle at all. <music> Alright, we all know that Figma has a strong track record when it comes to delivering innovative and interesting updates. Every time they release something, the design community gets hyped and for good reasons. When I watched the config 2025 and opened my Figma afterwards, things felt a little bit different. Like what is this exactly? These kind of structural changes are a little bit overwhelming. Like imagine working on a huge project and you have to pause everything to learn uh, everything, you know, to learn everything about auto layout and how to use it again. Like it's kind of relearning process. And this is just my personal take, but if you do one thing really well, it's better than doing many different things decently. With this update, which introduces some illustrator style vector tools and even a website builder, Figma is definitely shifting. And by the way, we all know that Figma wiped out NFXT, Envision and Sketch with its powerful releases. And maybe once the CMS is added and the website builder gets better, that would be the right time to compare it with Framer or every other NOCO tools out there. But in the meantime, I've gathered some hot takes and interesting insights that you will want to hear. All right, Figma size environment. And as you can see, we have these categories for Explore. You can find a landing page, personal page, portfolio templates, business templates and everything. Let's say, for example, um, let's let's use this one. All right, neat. Let's use this template. And then once we open it, you're going to see that everything is placed inside components and they are actually uh, they, they have some interactions and everything. But uh, the key is to make everything inside components in Figma if you want to have a good experience in the Figma sites and then um, yeah perfect okay everything is inside a style guideline typographies colors buttons and menus footer and everything okay and then once we uh, go to the interaction tab actually you're gonna see that everything is linked up with those pre-made I mean style guideline components buttons and links and everything let me just zoom in and as you can see everything is linked up with those components and these component has uh, some interactions and animations inside of it and then let's just basically run it to see oh yeah a nice preview page which is a little bit like Framer, but it's perfect. Like I love working more with Figma sites, definitely. And then let's just publish six issues to review. All right, this is your pre-made template. How do we have six issues to review? Like let's just hit publish and wait until the website gets published. All right, now we have this generated URL. And then once we open it, uh, the load speed is good. And then let's just basically give it a inspect. And as you see, everything is inside a div and that is generated by JavaScript. Like there is no semantic HTML on this website. I know that it, it highly depends on the designer that designed this stuff. Like uh, you can make it, mm, let's say you can make it semantic if you design well, but uh, on the early stage, like Figma sites is on the beta version. So uh, we can't expect too much actually, <laughs> but um, this is also bad. Like we can't place everything inside divs, like divs and divs and divs. Like there's no semantic HTML and that's that's pretty bad for SEO and performance and speed and everything. Like uh, let's basically 
uh, see what do we have on the buttons and links let me just give it a inspect alright it's inside a paragraph wow oh my god like it's inside a div and then another div another div oh nested divs and as you can see the main div has a row of link in href like this is pretty bad like we can't use this as a real website there should be some kind of you know ahref tag for the links and buttons for example not just a single div with the role of link this is pretty bad for seo performance and everything let's just basically uh inspect some of the other stuff on the page all right we have a paragraph here gym after all right perfect okay and then guys this is good for now like this is a beta version we can't expect too much from from figma sites actually it's a beta version but remember all of those beta versions that figma releases like it's so close to the final version to the alpha version and um i don't know why they did this but um uh, there might be some you know restrictions and uh structural issues because they are switching from from a design tool to a completely um kind of no code tools no code tool actually this is good for now like uh we have all those interactions and everything that we had before like if you want to animate something you just need to basically give it a uh interaction and then scrolling and everything is pretty pretty much like before before the figma sites actually how we did those interactions inside figma now you can bring it here and then make a real website with it we all know that framer has been focused in the no code space for the past five or six years and it's built a platform where designers can generate passive income whether that's through referrals or selling templates assets or even plugin licenses and it's not just for designers developers are also making solid money from it and with the rapid growth in market adoptions and increasing the number of uh, resources being available uh, framer seems to be turning into an unstoppable force and by the way framers community is one of the most passionate i've ever seen and that's a major plus when deciding whether to stick around in this game on top of that, Framer has already great integrations in place. By the time Figma tries to catch up with the essential website builder features in, in similar gain similar inter integrations and in, in resources, it's gonna take a while. And in the meantime, Framer is making bold moves like uh, the your spring event, for example. They might s announce some, you know, interesting and exciting updates and features. But let's not forget that Figma has a stronger and more recognized community. And that's a big deal. Like it puts Framer in a delicate spot when you decide, when you consider actually uh, how many more users Figma has overall. Still, here's a fun fact over 127,000 websites are built and published with Framer and every two seconds a website gets published. And let's take a closer look to uh, Framer interface and usability to see what they come up with. And I mean, lately there are new features and everything. All right, guys, building in Framer gives you the same experience that you had with Figma. And actually, uh, this left panel is for managing your layers, components, assets, and pages. And this right panel is for breakpoints, layout, typography, colors, effects, overlays, and, you know, code overrides, exporting, and all of those stuff. Just the, uh, you have this publish button, which you can publish your website on internet and, and this M white options and, and you know modos are the same that we had on Figma. And actually we have great integrations and plugins for Framer actually and they are they are getting better and better. Like we have daily new plugins and templates and everything. The community is so passionate and the CMS 
is actually nothing too scary like it you can just basically go ahead and create a collection for example uh, this frame space collection uh, and then you can add item and enter your information to that CMS item and it's something that that is designer friendly actually you know, you don't need to be a you know develop a skilled developer or something like that so for example if I want to draw a frame here you can see that it's gonna be treated as the rules that I defined for the layout and it's basically direction distribute alignment wrap gap and paddings and if I duplicate this frame you can see that um, for example if I change the direction or if I want to make it center easy peasy like I have this free template and uh, and it's actually free on the framer marketplace you can go ahead and, and remix it and then tweak some of those elements to get more familiar with framer and as you can see the design and the quality of uh, building in framer is very 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 high like for example you can see all of those uh, templates that people people actually built and uh, what's it called marketplace let me just go to the templates so you can see that all of those high quality works like for example portfolios are massively <laughs> beautiful on, on Framer Marketplace or the SaaS websites actually and you can build all of those things with a um, good experience on Framer like it's so easy just just the pricing of Framer needs a little bit more work actually but anyway so we have great experience both in Figma and Framer. Both are doing a great job to make a good experience for a designer. And my conclusion is like we can't say rest in peace Framer, especially not yet. Framer isn't the kind of team that back down or fail to meet their users need. And as I mentioned earlier, Figma's website builder is still in its beta stage and it has a long way to go before we can say that it's truly compared with Framer or any other established no-code tool and ultimately it's the feature features and updates that will determine the direction and success of each platform but even more important is the uh, community behind the product Framer offers uh, real ways for designers to make money and as I said you can make money through templates plugin assets and everything and and that's a key reasons that it that the community is loyal and thriving with the upcoming spring event I'm expecting them to introduce some exciting new features my guess is they'll focus heavily on FX and uh, animations for more advanced experience and right now some of the uh, framers FX needs still needs still actually needs a little bit advanced tricks and code overrides so a more powerful and native solution would be a huge win let's see what happens and yeah that's it guys hope you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel see you next time peace